Hi everybody. Okay, in this video we're going to do some of the fun stuff. This is where Fusion 360 really, really gets cool. So, so far we have um, an eccentric cam placed. We have an axle. We have a follower rod that moves up and down. We got a ruler locked into place to take measurements. You don't even know what you're using that for. Um, but the problem is this. See, right now this follower rod can go down through the material. In fact, it can go slide all the way out through to it. So it's not like these materials are really contacting each other right now, you know? And what we want to do is we want to change that, okay? So we're going to go up to a symbol and we're going to enable contact sets. Now this isn't going to do anything yet, but what it's going to do is it's going to give us the ability to create a contact set, which and a contact set just says, hey, if I got two surfaces that are touching each other, don't allow them to go through each other. They act like they're real materials. Um, this is pretty computationally demanding. So if you notice uh, Fusion 360 glitching or it looks like it's struggling a little bit, just understand that it's doing a ton, a ton of math in the background. Um, and that's why it might be acting that way. But for, for something as simple as this, this is something we can get away with. You know, you wouldn't want to use this for a really, really difficult, um, complex device. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to go up to a symbol and we're going to create a new contact set now that we've enabled them. And it's going to say, what are the two components or multiple components? And in this case, what I'm interested in is the follower rod and the cam that we've created. I'm going to click OK. So now what's going to happen is this. You'll notice that if I go through and I push down, those actually now force each other to move. That's pretty sweet. Okay. Now, even better is so if I can get this thing all the way down to its lowest point, which I can actually, actually easily do that by going here and clicking on 180 degrees. Okay. I can go down and I can see basically how far this object is going to go down. If I zoom in really close, I can see a measurement there, okay? So that would be kind of important for me. That's, the thing is this, okay? By forcing it to move, you'll notice it forces the follower rod to come up, okay? But it doesn't force the follower rod to come back down. So we want to address that with one last step, okay? The motion of the follower rod is dictated by the um, slider constraint that we put in over here, the slider joint, okay? So this is the one that allows it to move up and down. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it. We're gonna edit joint limits. That could also be achieved, by the way, by just clicking right here, okay? Once we're in edit joint limits, what we can do is we can define a rest position. So what I'm gonna do is before I go any farther, I need to go back here, let's put it 180 degrees. And let's slide this follower rod all the way down and figure out how far down it can go. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here again. Maybe put a little closer than it can be. Okay, notice it's kind of embedded in the inside right now, but I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to choose 180 degrees, and it's going to push it up. Okay, so now that thing is exactly resting on the surface. If I zoom in really close, you can see right here it says it's at a position of negative 0.215, negative 0.215, okay? So now that number is going to be really important. When I go to edit joint limits, I'm going to define its rest position for the slider constraint as negative 0.215. That's the lowest point that it can go, right? I'm going to click OK. What the rest joint or the rest limit does, it says it wants to return there. Okay, so when I come over here now and I move this, whenever it goes up, it pushes it up, but then it tries to come back down to its rest position. So it always seems to be locked to it. And now to make things even better, I'll finish with this. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna say animate model. And now you can see what this thing looks like all put together. That is pretty awesome. Okay, next video I'll take you through and I'll walk you through what we're actually going to do with this ruler that's off to the side. But what we're interested in is really the placement of this follower rod. Where is the bottom of this follower rod compared to the angle? Or we could also go top of the follower rod, right? So this thing is moving on its own. Where are the high and low points and how do we create this motion and graph it? Okay, and that's the whole point of activity 4.5. So everything you've done in this uh, so far, these, what is it, seven videos now, is just to set up an inventor file so we can create graphs of motion and, and um, objectively measure things and, and measure motion and, and tell a story.
okay? So that's pretty awesome. If you got this, congratulations. You are ready to go on then to the next step.